is happening, folks. Stopping by to say hi. Chappie can't stay. Got stuff to do. Hello, Benages. Hey, Siri. Every time. Ferd, how are you doing? My hands are still in splints because I'm inflaming inflamed tendon. Ooh. Well, I hope you get better soon. Holly, I'm doing well. Y'all want me to finish Layers of Fear? I could finish that real quick. We can make that the first thing we do. So if you want you want creepy stories, we will get to that. I just gotta finish this game. Um there it is. Creepy video game time. Always fun. Always, always fun. We're gonna let this popped up. Hey Adele. Bandages, you have to go. Oh, that's too bad. Why am I so early? This used to be my regular time, actually. Oh, I gotta fix the uh yeah, let's do the game. Game capture. Stretch to screen. There we go. We're going to do the chappy one. That's not a nightmare face. It's not a nightmare face at all. Anybody home? I swear to God, if something came shooting out that... Oh, man, I peed myself. That poor chair. Never, never had a chance. All right. Let's finish these spoopies. Ow. Oh. <laughs> Gotta do this again. And that is the finger. The finger. Dang old finger, man, old hell. We're still in trial and error. somewhere oh yeah this is one of those spoopy ones maybe I can get through it without any uh... there once was a man full of passion but then his wife went out of fashion. Her face was a mess. He couldn't care less. She hated the man with passion. What well, a feeling we're going to see mom soon. I'm telling you, I will turn around. Well, that's nice, isn't it?
I don't know what I do in this one. So bad. Nope, let me out, let me out. Yep. I'm bad husband, I know that, I'm fine with that. I gotta go this way. Okay, I am so apprehensive right now. God bless it. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm glad you got to hear that. Oh, okay, that's not the, um, it's not the game, that's... Oh, God, what's happening here? Oh. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. What is this? I don't remember this. Maybe I kind of remember this. Try to pull whatever that is up. <laughs> it's not wife. Nope. <laughs> God, I hope it lets me get through this. Why do I feel like I'm going to see the wife soon? So freaked out right now guys uh, I hate this oh there's a there's a thing I gotta do Sir, my wife would be thrilled to play your wedding. Please give us a call tonight and we'll work out the details. Our number is 363853. Hope to hear from you soon. I don't know the numbers. I don't know the numbers. What's in here? Oh. Controls are kind of backwards. I think I should be happy. Why am I not happy? I have a beautiful daughter. I think she is 
I know she is. Why can't I look at her without feeling sick? I used to have a loving husband. Wonderful. <laughs> That's a woman's voice. That's why he doesn't like her. Sensitive. Now all I see is a strange man who cares about his paintings. Like they matter at all. It's all so pointless. Music used to help. It doesn't anymore. As long as you stay away from me, lady, we're fine. Not kidding. Oh, please don't. Please don't be there. Oh, thank God. An idiot. To think that someone like me could ever compete with you in all your sublime beauty, everlasting, immortal. Doing my best not to turn around or see my wife because she's scary as hell. Oh, I remember this part. Go, 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 get, go, get, push through, get it, get it. If I hear, if I hear a lady crying, I'm turning around. Unless she's in, unless she's behind me. <laughs> and then. What? Oh God, I feel like. That's moving. What was taking so long? Open, Open this fucking, fucking door. door. Need, to, Need go. to go. Open up. Open up. Hell, Hell is it? Oh God. God. No. 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 You're a bad dad. Get away from her. Stay away from this crazy lady. Don't want. Okay, yeah, I gotta do another one. Go go gadget chair lamp. Bindi and a chappy ink machine. Just give her the beauty box. Am I done here? Nope. I got one more. At least. Oh, it's my daughter. I care about that one. Sector. Oh, just give her the 80 bucks. I get it. From the story yesterday, right? What? There's a mirror on the ceiling? Finally, someone, someone had to had bear, bear witness. witness. I couldn't, I couldn't just, just look at my own, own work. work. Art, Art and, and the artist, artist needed, needed an audience. audience. A critical, critical eye, eye on things. things. 
I knew I what I had, had to do. do. I, I gouged, gouged it. it. Scooped, Scooped it up, it up like, like ice cream. cream. Felt, Felt like, like a, a butcher. butcher. A monster. But at least there was there to was come something, something beautiful, beautiful from all this filth. filth. What's it, what's it making me do? It's doing the thing already. Oh, it's doing the thing. Oh God. All right, it's this again. Okay. Sort of remember this, this part's really weird and sort of convoluted and and then I gotta go over here it's gotta change okay it's gonna keep trying to turn me around So this took this took me a while last time. I don't think it'll take me this long this time. That's right, because I found two of them, so I gotta do it twice. Maybe a third time? Can we get a third? No? I don't think so. I've gotta find the Ah! I don't know why it does this. It puts me in like a spinning thing. Look for things that I can touch. I already checked both of you. There's a puppy. Who doesn't love a puppy? Sometimes a puppy makes the poops, but it's okay. You guys remember this part? Oh, there it goes. Oh, I saw something. Ah, there it is.
Espera aí. Grande. Ah, então. Me zooming in. That's creepy. Uh, don't get me wrong. This is super creepy. Alright. There's this area. And then there's this area. It should expand by now. Make it rain! Aha! So I remember this one. Who are you even playing with? That's not creepy. All right, we've got to find this code. I want to say it was not over here. Baby dolls for dinner. <laughs> Delicious. Yes. So filling. Scrum Hey, I got that. Let me let me do the change. Can't do the change. Aha! Can I do something? I did nothing! Ha <laughs> Yes! Beautiful! Got to find the code. Does anyone remember the code? Because I know if I go up here, something's going to happen. Oh, it didn't. It's not happening. Nope, that don't happen yet. We found the apples. Did a thing. Did not grab that. Aha! Do you mind? It is art, magnifique. You love my accents? Yeah, I'm ridiculous. Yes, yes. Hurry. Hurry. Who are you playing with? 
What's the code? What's the code? I see a booby. <laughs> yes. Just working for some codes. You see any codes? Open says me. <laughs> Where are you at, little code? There it is. Zero four two. That's the code. That's my number. That can't be right. This little spin and top, it spins forever because it's great. Anybody want to play some checkers? Oh, it's my fuzzy friend. How do you do? Most indubitably. Oh, he, he had to go. It's too bad. Hey, Smiley. I need super chat. Yeah, I know. Yes. yes. That's, That's it. That's it. <laughs> it's beautiful. beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Just, Just like, like I always. always... Oh. Well, what is what this? Is this? Uh, I don't I understand. understand. <laughs> no. No. Stop talking. Please. Please. Oh, so close. Oh, oh. This is time. Don't you scare me. Don't you scare me. I 
I need super chat. I know I'm so close. I'm at 4,000 hours though. So that's kind of cool. This is the selfish ending. cannot leave. That was supposed to be the end. something in here I gotta do. I finished it. I got the I got the bad husband ending. So the first one was the good husband ending, that was the bad husband ending. did it. Now there's only one ending left to get and I don't know if I'm going to get that one because F that game even though I've played it twice. That is just too much. It's oh it's too too much. It's awesome though. Oh man. We're on our way to 1k. Yeah I know. Help me hit 1k. I need super chat. Um, I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm going to go smoky, give you some sweaty palms. No, no, mine are completely dry. <laughs> um, so if y'all want to hang on for one second, uh, by the way, if any, uh, any of you that were here yesterday and y'all donated, thank you so much. I was able to get a hotel room for another week. Um, <laughs> that helps tremendously. It makes it makes a big difference um, having a roof over my head. And the internet here is good. I used to, I've, I've been here before. Actually, in the same room. Um, I, it's the place that has the, the hookers and the, and the drug dealers. <laughs> but the room's comfortable. And the Wi-Fi is good. I like it. And the people here are pretty nice. And it's quiet. So, it is what it is. 
So if y'all want to hang on with me one second and chat with me in the um, on the doobly doos, this guy, I would do that. I would love to chat with y'all for a little bit. If y'all would bear with me, let me go smoke a smoky real quick. A fine establishment. The most reputable of establishments. <laughs> but I'll be right back and uh, yeah. I'll chat with you all on the phone.
Take this thing out for now. That's better. So Adele, I take it you live in uh, in England. Is, is that where you're? Is that where you're from? I scared you. Oh. Don't turn around. So we're going to do some creepy stories if you guys are going for that. And there we go. Strange without my boring. When you say that, I Google it. It says Frederick Engels. Frederick Engels was a German philosopher, communist, social scientist, journalist, and businessman. Are you a communist, communist and a businessman? I don't. Well, I mean, I guess you can be. Play with my Rapunzel hair. <laughs> I don't, put the, I don't play with my hair that much. Every now and then. I do play with my hair a lot. We can stop the music now. There we go. And I can do this. Mute the desktop audio. I've got one. It's a short one. But I've got a story. This is written by Zach Hicks, a.k.a. Mark DeMarco420. They're not coming. They're already here. Here's the link. Ingalls is German for angel. Let's see here. Oh, pop, pop. I'm trying to pop my ankle. Mm. If I, if I ever find myself in England, I'll sure to uh, pop by. I've got a few people over there. But um, there's the link to the story. You guys know how I am. Words are hard, okay? Don't judge. Whatever. Um, but if you'd like to read it, there's the link. If you like the story, go ahead and up vote it. The, uh, the authors appreciate that. But here's a story. It is, they're not coming. They're already here. They're not coming. They're already here. That's all the email said. No subject. No name. The email account was clearly a junk or throwaway account linked to an AOL mail. At first, I laughed at the ridiculous, serious message, not paying much thought. I used to sign up for all sorts of stupid conspiracy slash UFO magazines and online subscription when I was younger. I figured it was just spam mail, trying to get people to go to their website or something like that. But then I remembered that there was no URL or link to anything. Only those six ominous words. I remembered thinking that if it was some sort of marketing gimmick, 
that whoever was running the departments was doing a terrible job. Just as I was finishing that thought, I heard my phone ding. It was another email from the same person. This time, all it said was, don't act any different or say anything. They will know. At this point, I began to feel a little creeped out. I still didn't know the person or what they were talking about or if they even meant to send the cryptic message to me. All I knew was that I was scared. I replied back, I think you have the wrong person. Please don't email me again. Foolishly, I thought that would resolve the issue. It didn't. About five minutes later, I received another email with my full name, date of birth, and apartment number. At first, I thought that perhaps this was a cool prank some friends of mine were playing on me, but even they would take the, wouldn't take the joke this far. Finally, I decided enough was enough. So I blocked the sender's email address, surely, I thought. That would put a stop to all this nonsense. But once again, I was wrong. I received another email from a different account, same thing as before. No subject, no name. Just another foreboding message. Hey, Chappie. If you got... I'm going to pause real quick. Chappie is, is another a Chappie account. And uh, he was here before me. Uh, so you guys should totally check him out. He does, uh, he does funny videos. <clears throat> I received another email from a different account. Same thing as before. No subject, no name. Just another foreboding message. Whatever you do, don't look outside. As soon as I read that last word, I heard a loud pop outside of my apartment just as my power went out. I thought the sound may have just been a generator or something, but then a blinding blue light began pulsating outside. As curious as I was about the source of the light and the noise, I couldn't stop thinking about the last email. Whatever you do, don't look outside. Could this really be that great of coincidence, or did the person sending me these emails know something that I didn't? Either way, I was too afraid to look outside. The pulsating lights began to scan up and down my apartment building, instinctually ducked under my window, afraid that whatever that light was might reveal my location. Then the light disappeared. At that moment, the power came back on, so I stood up and slowly drew back my curtain. Nothing looked abnormal. The parking lot was still and quiet as on most nights. I saw a man nonchalantly walking his dog, as if nothing had happened. I felt silly for getting so worked up and scared over nothing. Then my phone dinged again. This time, all it said was, I told you not to look outside. Now they know. At this point, I knew that someone was watching me. There was no other way to explain how they knew that I had disobeyed their previous message. I looked outside my window again and saw the same man with his dog, except they weren't walking anymore. They were standing still, looking straight up at my apartment, both their mouths agape. I quickly closed my curtain and grabbed my phone. This was too much for me. Without thinking, I dialed 911 and waited several minutes before the operator answered. 911, what's your emergency? I immediately began to explain every strange thing that had been going on for the last hour or so. From the emails and the strange blue lights of the man and his dog, I suddenly realized that I sounded like a schizophrenic with all my incoherent ramblings. I had just begun to slow down and apologize to the operator when a piercing high-pitched sound took over the call. The sound was so intense that I couldn't even leave my phone to my ear. Just as I ended the call, another email popped up. There's no hope in resisting now, it read. You're just another one we've lost. I grabbed a duffel bag and began stuffing it with as many clothes and other items as it could hold. 
There was no way I was going to stay holed up in my apartment for a second longer. I, prefer, I preferred to stay a few nights in a hotel or even in my car, if necessary, until something more concrete figured out. I swung my front door open to find dozens of people surrounding the man and his dog, all of them staring straight at me, mouths agape. I heard the same piercing noise as before. It occurred to me that the sound was actually emitting from their open mouths. I started to make a run for my car, and they all instantly threw their arms up, pointing at me while slowly walking in my direction. There were too many of them, and my car was too far away. I sprinted back to my apartment and boarded up all my doors and windows. It's been three days now. I still haven't left my apartment. Every call, time I try to call someone, I'm bombarded with the same high-pitched tone. Hey, go fish. I'm at a loss for what to do at this point. Giving up and submitting to them is the last thing that I want to do, but it's starting to seem like the only option. I'm not sure how much longer I have before they break me, but there's still hope for you. Whatever you do, don't look outside I like that one it's kind of like don't turn around aliens I swear to dang it they, they is outside my window just telling me to just try to get me to look dang old dang man old. um My, grand, my grandmother was murdered for a tea set. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm. It sounds very British. It's like, if it were American, my grandma, my dang old grandma was murdered for a beer can. Because that's just how we roll. We can try this one. My middle school had its own variation of Bloody Mary, but she was real. This is by N. B. Smith. Make sure it doesn't have one of those little warnings. This is a long one. It says 10 minutes, so it's at least double the, the last one. All right, so I'm going to make a story right now and send it. Oh, I'd like that. Did you get my, you have my email address? It's so 1997, it hurts. Check texts. Text is checked. Thank you, Smiley. I may take you up on that. <laughs> Guys, if y'all don't know, uh, Smiley makes awesome stuff. He's a, he's a nurse, but calm down. Men can be nurses. This is 2019. Uh, this, is, this is his face. That's... <laughs> I hope he's okay with that. 1997. <laughs> nah, check out my other channel. Well, you gotta post the link. Post the doobly news. Quote, news, quote. I would be scared if I knew what was outside. Out, what outside was. Spooky owl story. 
1997 was a good year. It was a good year. We got our first PlayStation. Oh, those were the days. My bestest nurse face. <laughs> he doesn't look too smiley. Yeah, he does. That's. <laughs> you want him to treat your severed legs? <laughs> you want this man to treat your severed legs? Just hang on. Seriously. That's the face he would make if he saw your sev your severed legs. Wait, I can't. I, I can't. <laughs> oh man. So funny story, Chappie. There, he comments it on one of my videos. And he's like, "There can be only one." And we just went back and forth. He's he's actually a pretty cool guy. But uh. Yeah, so he's got a sense of humor. Chappies normally do. We're a rare breed. Let's uh, let's um, uh, let's do the story. <laughs> the only face I'd want to see if my legs were severed. <laughs> So here's the link. Boop. Don't give that a don't give this one a listen. Where am I at now? Uh, I'm still in Texas. I'm in Dallas. Um yeah. That's I'm in a hotel. Just, what if your arms only did this? What's up, guys? What's, what's up? <laughs> oh, there's something wrong with me. My, as my aunt likes to say, bless my heart. Why? When I say creep, you say chappy. Creep, chappy, creep, chappy. Texas is bigger than my whole country. <laughs> dying old dying Texas is huge. Because Texas... That would make for a nice gift. He's in my bug land. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm in Addison. Yandere, you know where that is. Oh, I'll, I'll promote these guys. They make great chicken and sweet tea. I say you're not wearing pants. Go fish, I hope you are feeling better. Um, everybody give love to go fish and Ferd. Ferd, I hope you're doing well also. I am wearing pants. Horn dog is never wears pants. Hey. Put my finger in it and I dropped the ball. Find it. Don't ever do that at a bar because you'll never find it. I just sat on a testicle. Thanks, James. I love this shirt. It's it's comfortable. It's super comfy. Uh, 
Oh god, I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, Gore War is not here. Uh, thank you, Go Fish. Um, yeah, that does suck. What's up, Mr. Meme? Smiley, I'll call you after the stream. We can talk. Because we probably need to catch up anyways. Am I back to work? Did the airport job come through? No, it did not. So weird without the nose ring. That's the second comment I've gotten. Is that better? Dude, there's totally two chappies. We're multiplying. We're like babies, kids. We don't die. We multiply. So let's do this story. It is my middle school had its own variation of Bloody Mary, but she was real. Check. News, quote, news out, guys. Have I tried the VA for job info? Uh, no, I've got, I've got recruiters, like three different companies looking for me. I've got work in Texas. I've got uh, Indeed. I've got um, oh, so many of them. I'm trying to think of them all. I, I mean, I'm constantly getting emails and stuff about jobs. But, um, Smiley, I don't know if you heard me. I'll call you after the stream. We can chat. Oh, yeah, LinkedIn's another one that I'm on. Done. Subbed, danged, and stuff. Dang old dang. Yes. You gotta watch doing that because you can drop a bow on something. I'm not, I don't want to destroy anything in this hotel room. That's, that's powerful. We're going to start this story. Everyone knows the story is. <laughs> everyone knows the story of Bloody Mary, and everyone knows how to summon her. Say her name three times in front of a mirror with the lights off. Of course, there are slight variations to the exact story depending on where you live, but it's all basically the same, right? My school was no different, a bunch of us girls. I do a really good, a really good girl voice. A bunch of us girls in the seventh grade would gather up in the bathroom at least once a week, turn off the lights and say her name three times. Of course, nothing happened, but I always kept my eyes squeezed closed. So even if something did happen, I wouldn't have seen it. We were a bit morbid, thinking back on it. I knew that it wouldn't work, but I also knew that we shouldn't be tempting fate. The urban legend states that she will kill you or scratch your eyes out. So why exactly would we even have wanted to try to summon her? I guess kids do stupid things when they're young, but that's no excuse for how far it went. Like I said, it started with a bunch of us in seventh grade, a bunch of us in seventh grade doing the ritual in the bathroom. Closest to our fourth period class, the six of us had all met in fourth period at the beginning of the year and since fourth period was right before lunch, we would all slip away and do our ritual without being bothered. Bloody Mary or Mary. As we began to call her, it became almost a long lost friend of ours. I don't think that my friends knew that I kept my eyes closed though. 
And I wasn't about to tell them that it was possibly my fault that it wasn't working. Nothing happened over the span of a few months. No merry apparitions, although we tried a bunch of variations. At least until the day that Cassie, the unofficial leader of our little group, ran up to me in a huff outside before school started. Hey, Nikki, she said. I found a real way to get Mary to appear. I already told the others. We've got to meet at the outside bathroom by the pavilions to make it work. I tried to question, to protest, to, to protest, but the bell had rung and she was already walking away. Meet us there, okay? She called over her shoulder. The bathroom by the pavilions was the worst. It wasn't connected to the main school building, so it had no air conditioning and even worse, no inside lights. The only source of lights was provided by a single, link, a single flickering bulb and small grates that allowed the sunlight to filter in. And to top it off, the whole place smelled like a porta potty. The outside bathroom was truly awful. But I did as I was told and I met the girls right after the bell rang for lunch. Instead of turning the light off immediately though, Cassie gathered us up in front of the row of sinks, gesturing to the middle sink in the row of five. She said, I finally figured it out. My brother's girlfriend came over last night and she said that she and her friends were able to see Mary here. And she lived. Why are they instead, why here instead of any other mirror? What did she say happened? Bethany, Nia, and Erica all spoke at once, and Cassie waved a dismissive hand. I'm not gonna... She didn't go into much detail because my parents were out. She was going into my brother's room, but she said that we first have to acknowledge Mary's baby, and then it will work. Mary's baby? I asked, not quite understanding, understanding, but definitely not wanting anything to do with a ghost baby. Yeah, that's what she said. I'll take a few days. It'll take a few days. But she said it will work for sure. Okay, how do we do it then? Mia chimed in from the back. I was already somewhat apprehensive being in very isolated, very creepy outside bathroom. But I felt my stomach immediately drop when Cassie said, first we have to summon Mary's baby. My body instantly wanted to flee. And I wish I, I wish that I trusted my instincts. Instead, I stayed silent and Nia asked, wait, I thought Mary killed her babies, didn't she? Well, yeah, but in death, she still wants them, Cassie replied. I guess. Okay. So how do we do this baby thing? And why do we have to do it here? Erica asked, her nose scrunching up at the smell. Cassie sighed and said, I don't know. Tyler's girlfriend said it was something about the baby being born prematurely and being stuffed down the sink without anyone knowing. Bethany opened her mouth to say something, but Cassie continued. I know, okay? It sounds dumb, but she said it worked. And that would have... <laughs> and what we've been doing hasn't. So we can... So we can at least try it, right? We all shrugged in agreement. After looking at each other directly, Cassie began again. Okay, so first... We have to have the water on, cold water only. She turned on the tap, then pointed at Bethany, who was the closest to the door, then locked the door and turned the light off. When Bethany did so, Cassie instructed us to all gather in front of the dirty mirror above the running sink. Okay, now hold your arms like you're holding a baby. Look straight into the mirror and rock your arms back and forth while saying the words, 
we should feel a weight in our arms. And then we have to release it over the sink like Mary did. Ready? She looked at our reflection in the mirror, gave a nod in response to ours, and began to recite, Baby Blue, Baby Blue, your mommy's gone away. Baby Blue, Baby Blue, please come here to stay. Baby Blue will care for you. We're sorry your mommy could not. Baby Blue, please come to us. We promise that you won't rot. Baby Blue, your mommy's gone, but we will heal your pain. Baby Blue, please come to us. Your mommy is insane. The rhyme itself was disturbing, but even worse was the sequel that rang out from the faucet. Almost as Cassie had finished her right recent tape, finished reciting it. Surely it was the sound of a whining pipe, but it sounded sort of like a baby crying. Now, Cassie yelled, we all released our arms and bolted towards the door. Once safely outside, Cassie looked at us and grinned. I think it worked. We have to do this again every day for the next week or so, but I think it worked. We all looked at each other, unsure if we had experienced the same thing when Bethany spoke up. What was that sound? Was it the baby or just the pipes? See you later, GoFish. Cassie shrugged. I don't know. But once we finish this, it's really going to work. Let's meet here at the same time tomorrow. With that, she turned around and began walking to the cafeteria. We all slowly followed. The next day, we met outside the bathroom at again the same time. This time, when Cassie turned on the faucet, the squealing began immediately. It truly sounded like a baby crying, and I was freaked out immediately, but Cassie shut down my objections and told Bethany to lock the door and turn off the light. As soon as the lights were off, I squeezed my eyes shut. Cassie recited her poem. I tried my best to block out the sound of the crying baby, sounding squeal of the water faucet. What I could not brush off though, was the weight that I had felt suddenly placed in my cradled arms. When Cassie said now, I was first to the door. I tried to ask the girls about it later, but none of them would honestly answer whether or not the pipe sounded like a crying baby or if any of them felt weight in their arms. We repeated this for the next day, but I no longer cradled my arms. I may have imagined it, but I did not want to feel the weight again. After Friday's ritual, Cassie grinned at all of us and said, Monday should be the final one. We'll finally see Mary. We all walked over to the phone during the week. Uh, I'm sorry. We all talked on the phone during the weekend, but Erica was the only one who felt anything similar to the apparition, apparition that I did. She didn't tell the others, though, only me. So when Monday came around, I guess it, I wasn't the only one feeling the growing dread in the pit of my stomach. The clock ticked by, with the anxiety grew worse, until it was finally time. I felt like I was going to vomit. <clears throat> we all met up at the bathroom and followed Cassie in. Her confidence seemed to spread through us. While well, I did help a bit... I felt like the other girls had gotten the majority of it. I still ended up in front of that mirror terrified. Cassie turned the sink on. I didn't even wait for Bethany to turn off the lights before I closed my eyes. The sound of the baby began crying almost the same time Cassie began to, re to recite the poem. Words are hard. Baby blue, baby blue, your mommy's gone away. Baby Blue, Baby Blue, please come here to stay. Baby Blue will care for you. We're sorry, Mommy could not. Baby Blue, please come to us. We promise that you won't rot. Baby Blue, your Mommy's gone, but we will heal your pain. Baby Blue, please come to us. Your Mommy is insane. 
It felt like the air had been sucked out of the room, and in an instant, I fought to breathe through the hot thickness. I heard someone whimper softly. Erica, maybe? But I refused to open my eyes. And so I couldn't be sure. I stood completely motionless with Cassie and Nia on my left, Bethany and Erica on my right. The events that followed are something that I will only allow myself to think in my darkest moments that will always be imprinted in my mind. Drop the baby, Cassie yelled at the same time that someone on my right began to scream. Shortly afterwards, someone else, I think it was Nia, began to scream as well. Drop the baby now, Cassie yelled out. And through the screams, I heard a new sound. It sounded like an old t-shirt being ripped up. But as if the fabric was wet. No, someone yelled. And then there was a new sound, a bubbling, gurgling, wet noise. I wrapped my arms around myself and took a step back away from the other girls. The ripping sound increased in frequency, and the cry of the baby became more shrill. Mary, I heard Cassie mutter, followed by another scream. My eyes, someone on my right yelled out. And I couldn't take it anymore. I raced towards the bathroom door, blindly running with my hands against it to find the deadbolt. There was a horrible, wet, snarling sound behind me. I had just touched my fingers against the cold metal of the lock when I felt something grab me by the shoulder, sending a searing pain down my arm before I felt my body being thrown backwards. I must have hit my head because I passed out soon afterwards. I woke up in the hospital with my parents by my side. We were soon joined by the police officers who wanted to talk to me about what had happened. My father tried to protest. She's been unconscious for five days. She's obviously been traumatized. Can't this wait? Sir, I understand that it's troubling, the officer replied. But you would feel but how would you feel if you were the father of one of those other girls? Please, sir, she may be able to provide crucial information about all of this. My father stepped aside with a sigh and let one of the officers approach my hospital bed. Hey, Nikki, he said with a soft smile. I need to ask you about what went on in the bathroom, about what happened to you and your friends. Do you think you can do that for me? I nodded slightly before asking, did something happen to my friends? Are they okay? The officer's eyes briefly darted away from me and I continued, you aren't going to believe me when I tell you. I didn't see anything anyways because my eyes were kept shut the whole time. I really, truly didn't see anything, I promise. I only, I only heard things. The policeman continued smiling warmly and said, it's okay, Nikki, just tell me everything you heard then. I told him the entire story about how Mary, about Mary and our ritual, and that when I went, as I went on, my parents' faces became more horrified. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed, but mostly I was scared of what happened to Cassie and the others. When I finished describing everything, I asked the officer about my friends. He apologized and said he wasn't allowed to discuss it with me. The cops left the room, so I asked my parents the same question, and it caused my mom to break into tears. I ended up not finding, um, finding out until a few weeks later when I was checked into an inpatient mental health facility for a majority stay, or mandatory stay of at least 90 days, that I had no idea, no idea what was going on, but I saw a therapist daily to discuss what went on in the bathroom after the first few days of me repeating the details over and over during our long, discuss, uh, our long sessions, the therapist finally began to discuss what happened with me. 
Some of my friends had been hurt that day. One of them had died. My therapist really wanted me to name which one of my friends had done this to the rest of us, citing my horribly bruised shoulder as proof that somebody physically in the bathroom had done this. She wouldn't accept my explanation of Mary. I'm pretty sure she thought it was Cassie. Little by little, my therapist slipped the details. I'm sorry, Nikki, but I just can't accept that something supernatural attacked you and your friends. How then could Bethany be blinded, but not the others? How could Erica's cheek be mutilated at nearly the same time? Do you think the supernatural being attacked all of you at the same time, but with different attacks? all within a few minutes? How could that be possible? I had no answer. During another session, she asked, then how could Nia be murdered directly beside all of you? The same entity was attacking both Erica and Bethany. Are you sure that you didn't see anything at all? And at another, she said, Nikki and Nia were standing on the farthest left side, right next to Cassie. Her body was cut open in the in ribbons. Her body was cut open in ribbons. You had your eyes closed the entire time. As you've said many times, you only recall Cassie saying things related to Bloody Mary and the ritual, as you call it. Would it be possible that Cassie could have been moved without you knowing, say to your right side where Bethany was? It is possible that Cassie had something sharp, like a pair of scissors, something to cut both Nia and Bethany. Take it easy, Chappie. The, the therapist reviews, the therapist refused to acknowledge anything that I said. She insisted that I must have been confused hearing Cassie's voice on the left side and Bethany's voice on the right side at the same time. She said I must have been mistaken when I heard the growling, the snarling, the terrified voice of my friends as I fumbled to find the lock to the bathroom door, that I must have seen something that couldn't possibly have kept my eyes shut the entire time. The therapist was an idiot. I continued to tell the truth, and after 90 days, I was allowed to go home. I had missed Nia's funeral I soon found out that Bethany and Erica were leaving the state while Cassie had been charged and held responsible for Nia's death and subsequently confined to a psychiatric hospital. My parents chose to homeschool me. It's been a decade, and if I try not to think about any of this, in fact, I was able to forget about it for a few years. I was able to live my life normally, albeit avoiding mirrors such as, as much as possible, just living my life and getting by until Cassie called me a few days ago. I don't even know how she found my number, but she's left a few voicemails now and hasn't stopped calling. I listened to one voicemail and heard what she wanted, and now I'm trying to convince myself that I wanted nothing to do with any of it. She has a plan set, and I don't want to be involved. I don't. However, I have to admit that I have fantasized occasionally about us like all going back, performing the same ritual, this time with video evidence. I've wanted to call Bethany and Erica to ask, her, ask them what they saw, but I never found the courage a part of me truly wants to know what actually happened that day. Wants, wants to try again and keep my eyes open this time. But I honestly don't think that I could go through this again. Then again. That, that girl's creepy. She, she's a creepy girl. So much nope. How are you guys doing? I'm gonna see if Creepy Chappy has an email.
No new emails. Quincy, are you going to write me a story? Scared my chappy. I'm feeling very creepy. Mini spoops, much nopes. What else do we got? Well, don't give me the sequel, dang it. I don't know what the original one was. Dang old dang man, oh hell. What's the email again? Oops. It's so... <laughs> um, middle... 1990s to middle 2000s, it hurts. Oh, I'm not reading out the... No. It's a poem. I don't like poems. Hey, Holly. Area, Indiana. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to say it like that. Never mess with mirror entities. They will ruin your whole day. Well, this story... by Quincy the Fancy Owl. Does this story have a title or is it just story? I can't say Quincy? I'm sorry. This story is by someone. Possibly an owl? Mm -hmm. Am I going to see scary stories to tell in the dark? <laughs> yeah. Gotta. Gotta. Well, this is a story by the fancy owl. Quincy, in fact. <laughs> My mother was strong brave and intelligent. We didn't have a lot to live off since our home was small, but we managed. She was a mother of eight, but still she managed. Most days my mother came home with food, but some days she didn't. I still loved her as she was doing the best she could. One day, she was taking longer than usual, and I was getting impatient, so I went looking for her. I knew it wouldn't be safe, but I was worried. I waited for the others to rest and started heading out. I was starting to head towards where she'd usually go, but then it started raining. I shivered as the rain began to fall on me. However, I stopped in my tracks. I saw her laying in the middle of the road. I didn't understand the situation exactly, but I was scared. I started yelling in fear, crying in pain for my mother. But when I thought all hope was lost, a lady came to the rescue. She took my mother in order to get help, but unfortunately she didn't survive. The lady had clear sympathy on her face and patted me on the head gently. I knew it wasn't her fault, so I didn't give her blame. All I did was show her back to my home so she could help the rest of us. She did. Although some of us had to be fostered, I was able to stay with her. 
She not only fed me, but she gave me a warm bed to sleep in. What more could I ask for? I was so happy. She brought me toys and treats. Although baths were always stressful, in all honesty, I was just glad to be her pet. That was a good story. This story is 75 minutes long. I am not, not reading that. That was uh, Quincy the Fancy Owl story. Is anybody left in here? There we go. Patchwork quilt. Patchwork quilt. An elderly woman hummed softly to herself, smiling happily as she worked. The needle glinting as her brittle hands slid through the material, piercing the scraps together with thread. Agatha Limerick, better known as Miss Aggie, had been working on this particular quilt for the past 46 years. And finally, finally, it was nearly finished. A shaky hand reached towards and stroked the material of the quilt lovingly. Such a beautiful quilt, earthy reds and milky peaches, suntan yellows and golds, browns ranging from coffee beans to milk chocolate, oh yes, such a pretty quilt she had made. Gentle smile, still in place, Aggie reached over for another scrap of material, only to touch the cool wood tabletop. Frowning, she turned to look at the pile of scraps next to her, but it was no longer there. Drat, she huffed. Well, I suppose I had been working on this for a while now, I must have used it all up, turning back to her work. She sighed as she stroked the material again, and here I was, so close to my goal. She said sadly, giving the quilt one last gentle touch. Aggie hefted herself out of the chair and hobbled to the stairs. Once reaching the top, she glanced down at the quilt, a look of determination on her face. Tomorrow, she stated, flick the lights off, I'll finish it tomorrow, and she closed the door behind her. The sun shone brightly as Aggie shuffled into the fabric store, immediately heading towards the scrap pile. As she dug around the fabrics, she glanced around the little shops three other women were browsing around. Once with a five-year-old boy, one with a five-year-old boy hanging onto the hem of her skirt. Aggie smiled slightly. She knew these women and was quite fond of them. Turning her attention back to the scrap pile, she looked over the colors and materials, checked their textures and durability. She frowned unhappily. While they were good materials, none were good enough for her quilt. Sighing, she went about collecting the materials she liked to look, she liked to use for different projects before heading towards the thread and needle area. See ya, Quincy. Uh, thank you for the story. It was while she debated on what color thread she wanted when the door's bell chimed. 
Another customer had entered. Glancing over her shoulder, Aggie watched as a young man about 23 stepped into the shop. He was tall, with pale freckled skin and short, shiny copper hair, almost like that of a new penny. What seemed to be constant, what seemed to be a constant smile stretched across his face as he turned to the young lady at the counter, Gracie. Aggie smiled as the two started talking excitedly. Grace seemed to vibrate with happiness. She seemed to like a nice young man. He seems like a nice young man. I wonder what his name is, Aggie thought to herself. Uh, Quincy, write more stories. I like that one. Awesome. And uh, have a good night. Aggie, I wonder what his name is, Aggie thought to herself. She hobbled over to the counter, setting her surprisingly heavy purchases down. Hello, Gracie, Aggie hummed. Miss Aggie, the Grace exclaimed. Oh, it's good to see you again. Have you finished that quilt you told me you were working on? No, not yet, dear, Aggie chuckled. She glanced over the young man curiously. Gracie followed her, great, her gaze. Oh, how rude of me, Aggie. This is my cousin, Anthony. He's here visiting before he heads to Europe tomorrow. Tony, this is Miss Agatha Limerick. His smile widened as he offered Aggie his hand giving a firm yet gentle shake when he took it. So you're the infamous Miss Aggie, I tell ya. Grace can't go on. Grace can go on about you and your work for hours. I don't think there's anything I don't know about you, Tony laughed, getting a dirty look from his cousin. Aggie chuckled good naturedly. Well, I assure you my work isn't quite as good as some make it out to be, she said handing Grace the money for her items. So you're going to Europe tomorrow? Whatever for. I'm going on an expedition in the Carpathian Mountains. Carpathian Mountains, Aggie asked. The Carpathian Mountains, you gonna keep saying it? Are the Easter wing of the great central mountain, mountain system of Europe covering around 900 miles long along the border of Austria, the Czech Republic and Slo Slovakia, Poland, Ukraine, Romania, Serbia, Montenegro, and Northern Hungary. Fifty-two point five percent of the Carpathian region is located in Romania. Here my team will be. My, aren't you knowledgeable? Aggie teased, reaching for her things. He just likes to toot his own horn, Grace huffed, shooting back a look at her still smiling cousin. Trust me, Miss Aggie. He's best ign Aggie, what are you doing? Just grabbing my things, dear. There's nothing to shout. But it's too heavy for you to carry all the way home, Grace said worriedly. Come now, Gracie. I may not be a spring chicken, but I'm not an old crone either. I can handle a bag of cloth and thread. But Miss Aggie, I can carry it, Anthony interrupted. Really? Grace asked. Looking at her cousin hopefully. Sure, no problem. Do I not get a say in this matter? Aggie huffed. With all due respect, ma'am, Anthony began. If you live as far away from this shop as Grace told me, I think you could use some help. I can even help you out with some other errands if you want. Well, I suppose, but only if you're willing to carry my groceries as well as my purchases here. Aggie stated, gesturing to all her bags on the counter. Of course, Anthony grinned. He really is such a nice young man, Aggie thought, smiling as he held the door open for her. 
This is either going to be a weird porno or Aggie's creepy. You mark my words. Aggie hummed a soft tune as she hobbled up her front door, Anthony behind her. The shopping had gone quickly. Hey, Pip. If only in comparison to when she had did it alone. I'd forgotten how nice it is to have someone coming along with me, she thought, ushering Anthony into the kitchen. Front door closed and locked behind her. Shuffling in after him, she could not help but chuckle as he attempted to figure out what went where. Such a nice young man, she thought again, moving as to help him. No, dear, the bread goes in the fridge and the canned goods in the cupboard. It took about an, half an hour to put everything away and even longer to clean up the, floor, the flour that had spilled in the process. I am so sorry, Miss Aggie. I hadn't thought it would bust like that. Anthony had cried, obviously worrying in his eyes. Aggie had simply smiled and waved him off, saying it was nothing to worry about. It's too bad, though, Aggie thought as she stepped out of the kitchen. Two steaming mugs in hand. I was really looking forward to making those pastries tomorrow, sighed softly and made her way into the dining room where Anthony was waiting. His brow creased in worry as he saw her. I really am sorry, he lamented. It's fine, Anthony, here. I made us some tea. A small thank you for the help. Aggie handed him one of the mugs before sitting across from him. I hope you like it. It's my own special blend. Anthony smiled at her in gratitude before taking a sip. Wow. I don't think I've ever tasted something like this before. What's in it? He asked curiously. Now, now, Aggie tutted. It's my own little secret. Now she'll be taking it to my grave. They both chuckled before falling into uncomfortable conversation. They chatted for what seemed like hours about things ranging from Aggie's quilt to other such projects to Anthony's old adventures as well as those to come. It was very calm, and soon enough, both mugs were drained. And then in Portugal, Anthony stuttered to a stop, mouth gaping in a yawn. I'm sorry, Miss Aggie. I guess I'm more tired than I thought, he chuckled lightly. I should probably go now. Making as to stand, Anthony swayed before falling back into his chair. My dear boy, you look exhausted. Why don't you spend the night here? I have a spare bedroom just downstairs. No, I'd have Tate to intrude. Another yawn escaped him. Intrude. Nonsense, Aggie insisted, tugging at his arm. Just rest here tonight, and I'll have Gracie bring your things over in the morning. Well, if you're sure, Anthony said hesitantly, eyes drooping. As he was dragged along, of course, of course, said Aggie, opening the basement door and flicking on the light. She couldn't help but chuckle as they made their way down, both luckily not have, to have fallen. He really is tired, Aggie thought, guiding him to the bedroom. Oh, well, here you are, dear. Aggie had just barely gotten the words out before Aunt Be Anthony collapsed on the bed, snoring out a, without a care in the world. Aggie smiled kindly. You really are such a nice young man, Aggie said to the sleeping figure. It's too bad what I have to do. I swore to finish this quilt today. You have the perfect material. The sleeping man never saw the gleam of the knife as she pressed it to his throat. An elderly woman hummed softly to herself, smiling happily as she worked, the needle glinting as her brittle hand slid through the human leather, piecing the scraps together with thread. Agatha Limerick 
better known as Miss Aggie, had been working on this particular quilt for the past 46 years, and finally, after so much killing, it was finished. A shaky hand reached forward and stroked the material of the quilt lovingly. Such a beautiful quilt, with reds from a young Native American man to the milky peaches of the porcelain doll-like young lady, suntan yellows and golds from visiting Californians, browns ranging from coffee beans to milk chocolate to the lovely couple visiting in New Hampshire. And now the pale freckled pieces from the dear friend Anthony. Oh yes, such a pretty quilt she had made. Such pretty memories of the people I made it of. Gentle smile, still in place. Aggie clipped the last thread and looked down at her masterpiece, her patchwork quilt. Miss Aggie was evil. Dang old dang, man. She's crazy old lady. Why is alt tab not working? My keyboard's doing that thing again. I can't type. I'll have to restart to get my keyboard to work. Aye, aye, aye. Wait, maybe... No? Oh, mouse. Mouse isn't even... Oh, I am getting right click. Aha. But yeah. Hey, noisy. How are you doing? Hope you are doing well. Oh, tab doesn't work. That bothers me. What did I do last time? Did I restart or was it this one? Yeah, it's definitely a restart. Well, that's fine. Well, we're at about two hours. I think I might go offline and get me some food. Find a job yet? No. Not yet. But uh, quite a few. <gasps> Got an interview coming up on Thursday. Two days. And I think I have another one tomorrow. checking my indeed silly chappy this is my job now I would make this my job if I if this paid just enough to pay rent my car note, I'd be happy. Oh, I'd I'd love to do YouTube full time. It would keep everything crossed for me. Thank you. Intense concentration. YouTube will not sustain. You need more. YouTube could sustain if I was bigger and had uh, um, sponsors. Uh, 
I'm sure I'll find something soon. But anyways, I do appreciate it. Um, and everybody that donated yesterday really helped me out a bunch. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just, just a bunch. It was awesome. I can't type, David. There are people that live off YouTube, but, uh, not everybody can. But anyways, I'm sure I'll find something soon. But alas, I have to bid you adieu. If you're not in the Discord, the link is in the doobly-doos. Uh, if you want a, a cool Chappie shirt, link's in the doobly-doos. I'm not wearing my Chappie shirt right now. I probably should. Economists are predicting a world crash in 2020. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I better win the lottery now. But, um... Uh, you can't discord with your living situation. That's fine, Lauren. That's perfectly fine. I'm glad you were able to stop by. Uh, if y'all need to email me, Yes, yeah, there's chappy shirts and pillows and what was that? Adele. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I was going to say something. But yeah, if you're not in the uh, Discord and you're, you can. Please do so. Um, and if you're the dad's cord, you know who I am. I'm the troublemaker. I don't like that my keyboard's not working. Just shutting you down, David. Bam. Um, Adele, once again, thank you for the uh, the donation. That's awesome. No more kids in your Discord. You can kick them. You are the ruler of that Discord. In that room, you are a ruler. Lava lamp, bean bizzle. I did see the Eggo cake in the dad's cord. That's just a churched up waffle. But yeah, it does look pretty good. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I have to make a phone call. And uh, I'm probably gonna be going to bed here in a little bit. Wake up early and get at it again. But I love you all. You have your own Discord, but you just sit and mope. Aww. Uh, he, he messaged me the other day. Uh, I think he's better. Um, try messaging him on YouTube if you can. But all right, guys, you are all awesome, and thank you for being here. And uh, if you have any friends that like the creepy stuff, get them to sub me. I'm so close to that thousand. I mean, I say so close. It's like 600 something. 631. And that's awesome. But anyways, you all be good. I will chat with you later. And thanks for stopping by.